day nine. Let's make a file. So this will be the first time we'll write to our file system, so that will be very exciting. So I've made this little make.s program. All it does is it tries to create a file using a new xfcb make that turns into the bdos create file system call. And this will create and open a new file. So if you do make, who, it currently bails out with unimplemented. Create file will uh, create a directory entry for the file that you specify and set, set it in the open state so that you can then use it to write data. We're not writing any data, so it will just get a empty directory entry. So let's find in our BDOS, we want create file. Now we are going to have to implement nearly all of these, but most of them are trivial. So these are going to be unimplemented. Uh, these are unimplemented. This one is not unimplemented. This is, that should actually be direct console IO. Uh, that allows you to do things like poll for pending keys. Uh, I'm sorry, no it doesn't. Console status here does that. Uh, direct IO... Actually, yeah, direct IO is direct console IO, it provides a direct interface to the BIOS so it bypasses anything that the BDOS might be doing. In fact, our implementation here doesn't do that, so uh, get version just returns this constant value. Close file we're going to be working on not quite next, next but one. Uh, delete, yeah, write sequential we're going to have to do eventually. Rename, yeah, get login bitmap just returns a 16 bit value. Ditto, haven't done anything in this yet. Uh, turns a 16 bit value. This one will be interesting. This, uh, this looks up a value in the BIOS storage and returns it, so that's not complicated. These are just simple wrappers around read sequential and write sequential. Uh, what they do is they seek to a certain position specified with an absolute number of records. Uh, read sequential and write sequential have all the same information in them. They're just stored weirdly in the FCB. So that's not tricky, uh, not complicated. Compute file size, scans the directory, it looks for the largest extent number and uses that to compute the total number of records in the file. This is used to convert a sequential position into a random access position. That's pretty straightforward. That one doesn't do anything. And this one is kind of special. Uh, this one will write a random record to a new allocation block and fill all the other records in that allocation block with zeros. So, yeah, it is actually in CPM 2.2 despite the fact there's a gap in the numbering system. So, what we're going to do is, this is actually going to be part of open file. We're going to put this here. Uh, creates a file Fuck entry create file uh, set carry for error six five five whoops thinking about the Z80. Okay, so, so make foo, cannot open file, it's returned an error. Good. So what this does 
Actually, let's find the the BDOS. Is it called Make? Here we go. So what this does is it's going to look for an empty directory entry, uh, find one, copy the user's FCB into the DRENT, flush it to disk, and that's it really. We don't need to worry about a lot of these things so that, you know, for example, the user extent is not relevant because we know it's going to be zero. This is a new file. The record count is going to be zero because this is a new file, etc., etc. So the main thing we need to do is to create a directory entry, ensure that we update uh, the number of directory entries and make sure there isn't a matching file. Now, weirdly, if the file exists already, the default action is to return to the command prompt, i.e. do a soft reboot, which makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I have written CPM code that tries to create files, and like you have to try and open it first to make sure that the file doesn't exist so that you can return a reasonable error message, but uh, anyway, we're going to initialize the FCB. We want to check to see if the drive is right protected. Uh, so this is calling this function called check right. And this is doing a hard error which will abort the program. I don't think we've done any of those. Uh, this is calling an an error handler routine. So we're actually going to here. This looks like it's a table which you can patch. I do not actually recall any of this from the error message. So yes, this the standard error handling, it'll print a message, wait for the user to press a key, and then do a soft boot, which isn't that awful, I suppose. Okay, so check disk writable. And... is or the directory handling so this would go in drive management so check drive check disk disk writable and we'll just put an RTS there for now, I think. So create file here. So we now want to search for a um, a deleted directory entry, and to do that we are going to call find first, but we want to set the drive byte in the FCB to E5 to tell find first we're looking for empty directory entries. This will overwrite the existing drive, 
but that's okay because we know that the uh, it's been processed here we know that what's in there is the user code and we have the user code handy so we don't need to save it uh, this is pushing it onto the stack in the 8080 code um, so we call find first if carry is clear we've got one so we now want to copy the contents of the user's FCB into the directory buffer um, we want to make sure the allocation part is the allocation part of the FCB is all zeroed that's kind of important as we have no disk blocks allocated so uh, we're going to This is going to be a simple loop where we just copy a byte uh, current current dear end come away yep oops we need to compare that with the allocation buffer That's just going to be uh, current record. Actually, no, we're going to do AL plus sixteen. Okay. So we are going to update the current user to the right value. We are going to ensure that uh, the these four fields are all zero. We know that S2 has been zeroed because that happens in uh, new user FCB, but the others are not zeroed. So EX uh, Actually, we're going to do this further up here so we can save a tiny, tiny amount of code. Okay.
Now, I can't remember what I actually called that uh, routine. It's in find... No, it's not. It's in login. Uh, check... No, not check dear pods. Here we go. Update CDR max. done this right. Actually, I think... Actually, I think not. So we don't want to clear the metadata because we're relying on the user doing that. the user has to clear those bytes for the routine to work properly and that's in the specification. But we do have to We do have to do this bit. Because we want to leave the file, we want to leave the FCB opened. We do want to clear the allocation area in the FCB. So we're going to do that here. So LDA, so we start at here. So that means that we don't have to do this here because we can just copy the whole thing out of the FCB and it should be valid. So I think that's everything we need apart from one terribly important thing. What's this set woof? Set woof? Okay, that's the that, that's the S2 byte. Uh, there is one terribly important thing we want to do, which is we need to write that sector back to the disk. Now, we could just not do that. Set this bit to zero. This means that when the file gets closed by the user program, then this should end up being written back. But that would be dead confusing because firstly, the close code would have to handle the case where there wasn't a matching DRN for the FCB. And also, if the user tries to create another file, because this is always going to find the first file, we'll end up trying to put two files in the same directory entry and that ain't gonna work. So, how do we read from the disk? Well, read dear entry is the code that's actually doing the work. And this is pre-incremented. That means that 
this has correctly set the sector number and DMA and so on. So hopefully all we need to do is just call right sector and it should work. Okay, but we haven't actually implemented this. This is luckily very easy code. And this becomes BIOS right. We're going to put bring that out. Oops, JSR set current sector like this. Okay. So let's see if it works then. So make Nord. Cannot open file. Uh, did I remember to clear the carry? Make Nord. Cannot open file. Okay, I am going to guess that find first here is balked. So let's. Let's stick a jump star there. Fire up the debugger and see what happens. Okay, break one C two nine. Breakpoint in break one C two nine reset continue ignore. Okay. So set the drive byte of the DRN of the day, the FCB, which is at two one eight eight. So there is our directory entry with a E five at the beginning. Uh, what we're looking at here actually is makes p block. So there is the command line afterwards, which is nice. Uh, so we should be in find first now. Uh, Uh, should there be an LDA zero? Ah, ah. Uh, we need to tell it how many bytes of directory entry we want to compare. So for deleted files, that's a one. I've forgotten that that act, that calculation normally happens in the public entry point. So let's, oops, what's that? Uh, I'm scanning a big document, so if you may be able to hear machine noises occasionally, and it's not a very good scanner. Um, we were going to, did I save that? I did not save that, okay. So we are going to restart and try that again. So we are here. So 
So we set the count, home the drive, reset the directory position, read a directory entry, check to see if we're at the end of the directory. We are not. Did the user want to see deleted files? Yes, so we skip the CDR max test. Uh, do we are now going to do the comparison. So we check the first byte is not a question mark. We are not looking at byte 13. We're not looking at the extent byte. So we're here. Compare the two characters. This should be a zero. It's a zero. Uh, that's not a zero. Right, that's because the first directory entry is a file. Okay, so I think we've got four files in our directory. Okay, actually, I think I'm just going to continue. And uh, the program thought it worked, so let's do a DIR. And that does not look like it's worked. That looks like it's corrupted our disk. So let's take a look at what it did. Well, it has written a directory entry. It's got a user code of zero. Everything here looks fine. So why did DIR not work? This is the first directory entry, which is on a, uh, it, it's in the second record. So possibly something with the logic there has gone wrong. But I know what's happened. It's printing one file because in the during the login process when we scan the bit scan the directory we compute cdr max we are incorrectly calculating it based on the position in the directory buffer so we look at the first record then we look at the second record and we see that there's a maximum value of 1 here this is one directory entry we go down go through the rest and then when we do the directory scan because CDR max is one we only return one file so oops that's not the not the right thing to do yeah So this is this is no, that's not. That's it. This should be correct. Current DRENT is the um, is a counter. So wait, what's this doing? Move on to the next dear end. Directory pause should be the the count of directory entries. 
current dear rent is a pointer. So the maximum directory entry in the file. This should be direct uh, directory pos. And, and, yeah, directory pos is a two byte value. So this, in fact, throughout all this code, this should be current drent directory pos. Okay. Right, let's try that. Couldn't open CCP. Well, that'll be because this isn't working. Um. Calculate the offset in the. We get the sector number. We load the sector. Then take the directory buffer and we add. What on earth is this doing? Uh, this is calculating directory buffer plus. Uh, things. If we've gone through here, I think it's expecting directory pause to be the shifted. Now, uh, it thinks it's expecting A to be the shifted directory pause. But if we've gone through here and loaded a new sector, then that will be corrupted. So I think that needs to be LD0 to indicate that the shifted directory pause is going to be 0, which we know it will be because we're at the beginning of a new sector. So it, yeah. Couldn't open CCP. So I'm willing to bet this is because this code is doing something wrong. Have I misunderstood how my own code works? So we read a directory entry. We increment directory pause. So directory pause is pointing at the directory entry we just read. Are we resetting uh, the C CDR max value in the DPH? I am not actually sure we are. If carry set return three bytes, so that is the same as a jump to exit. But I don't think that will help. No. Uh, 
Okay, let's put a breakpoint in here because I bet this is what is causing things to go wrong. Debugger. Break 1EC0. Okay, so we are reading directory pause, which is zero at this point, because uh, we've just read one directory entry, the first one, and has incremented the directory pointer from invalid minus one to zero. And our DPH is at 5C4, and it's all zeros. Okay, so. We do the two byte comparison. Wait, what? This code is bollocks. Uh, we want to, you see, this compare instruction is going to discard the result of the previous compare instruction. That should be a SBC. So this is going to do a two-byte comparison by basically subtracting directory pause from DPH. Uh, if DPH is greater than or equal to directory pause uh, then num greater than or equal to num I think this wants to be a carry clear due to the way we've done this so that we're subtracting this is hang on, this is dph minus directory pause So A is directory pause. If directory pause is greater than or equal to DPH, carry set. Okay, then update CDR max. Okay, so compare, subtract. Carry is set because we haven't updated CDR max yet. So we now set CDR max and we go around again. This time directory pause should be 1, which it is. So, okay, and again, and again, and again, and again. So this looks like it correctly set CDR max. Oh, oh, oh. Um. Is the find next code here correct? Directory still looks valid. One D nine E. Okay. So we should have done the login. which means that CDR max should be set up correctly. So uh, CDR max is still at 5C4, and I believe it's these two bytes indicating four. 
see this is actually doing a compare and SBC but I bet that this comparison is wrong yes it is wrong that's inverted how did this ever work in the first place so compare current DRNT that should be directory pause Okay, 2OBF is the directory pause, which is currently 0. Yes, we've read one directory entry, so it's gone from minus 1 to 0. So 0 is less than CDR max, so we do not branch. Right, and now it loads the CCP, and if we do to DIR, one, two, three, four, five, end. Good, I think that works. So if I, I can type Fnord and it's empty, I can dump Fnord and it's empty. Not really a lot else I can do with it. So I think we're creating files. Let's make some more. If I do make baz, okay, let's try and make another Fnord. That shouldn't have worked, and it's created two Fnords. Why did that? Oh, I know why. It's because this search we did for empty DRNTs has, in fact, ignored the file name. So I think we're going to have to do another call to find first. In fact, we don't want to load that with 15 and we want to use a symbolic number for this uh, so if carry is clear i.e. if we did manage to read the file then set carry and exit And I think we want to put that here because we're about to start tinkering with the FCB. So make Nord. cannot open file that's correct um, I want this one right I changed this file so it rebuilt the disk image make Nord. make Nord. cannot create file good Okay, I think that's working. So what is next? Well, first I have to feed the scanner. Okay, uh, scanner is fed and scanning. Uh, the document it's, it's scanning a huge document with lots of pages and unfortunately the page feeder oh it feeds pages in all right it just tends to jumble them on the way out so once this is done I'm going to have to put like a, 
150 pages back into order. Ah, anyway, that's a different problem. I think we now want to try and write to the file. But first, I'm going to make me a new helper. Because we're about to have to start allocating disk blocks. So let's make a program that dumps the allocation bitmap of the disk to the console. Now, there is a call for this, which is get allocation bitmap. So we're going to put a pointer here and we're going to have an index. The allocation, the allocation bitmap can contain more than 256 entries, but we know this disk is smaller than that and this is a hacky debug tool. So how does it work? Uh, return address of allocation map. Return address of the current allocation bitmap in HL. Okay, so JSR BDOS get allocation bitmap STA in bitmap plus zero, STX in bitmap plus one. So we are now going to index Z repeat. Um, um, we are going to load the byte index, get one of the allocation bytes, stick it in value, you know what, I was going to try and print it as with like X's and dashes, but I can't be bothered, so Let's just print it as hex, which honestly is almost as easy to read. So we're going to copy this, uh, print an 8-bit hex number, and stick that in here. So this is going to be print hex number, print a space, increment index, load index, is it 32, which is I know is the number of bytes in my bitmap. No, I don't know that. Uh, 32 will do fine. Until it's equal, print a new line and exit. Space is undefined. So there is our new program, bitmap, unimplemented. Right, that's because we didn't, if we haven't implemented get allocation bitmap, which goes here. And this is going to 
this goes under drive management does it? No, it goes under login directory management and you should rename that banner bitmap say incidentally I've had occasional comments about how clicky my keyboard is you'll be pleased to know that I have acquired a new clicky keyboard that is even clickier and it feels so nice to use I'm probably going to end up using it as a daily driver just not at work because I'm not allowed uh, where did we put the bitmap? Update bitmap status is doing it. Get bitmap location is getting the location to the bitmap. Bitmap address is in variable called bitmap. Allocation bitmap from the DPH. Okay, well that's easy. Okay, so boot it, bitmap. Right, there is our bitmap. Okay, ignore the trailing garbage because we're dumping too many bytes. But we see that the first eight blocks are allocated. That's not right, is it? I think that is right, you know, because we now have lots of files. I was thinking we would just see the directory, but our file system is contains actual data. So a block is, uh, how big is a block? One K, so that's 400. So we've got two blocks for the directory. Uh, we've got a file, we've got another file, this looks like, no, this is the CCP, this one, it's C00. More files. See, there's actually quite a lot of waste of space because the allocation block is a kilobyte and most of our files are smaller than that. There's a text file, here we go. Uh, so, P by 400 is 8. Right, that's correct. We have correctly computed the bitmap. So let's go down to make. Try and create the file. is going to be it's FCB right sequential okay we haven't done that one yet but we haven't imported it so now we want to create our right sequential right yes Add another library function. So, why are we importing get and set? Or we dos or clear. So we now we are now calling write sequential in our program. 
So we call make Fnord and we get unimplemented because we haven't done write sequential yet. So we go to here entry write sequential making sure it's spelt more or less correctly so read sequential is this chunk of code Early versions of CPM only had read sequential and write sequential. If you wanted to do uh, random access, then the user would tinker with the FCB directly. I'm actually not entirely sure why they ended up putting the random access stuff in the BDOS. Okay, now a lot of this code is going to be exactly the same. So we're going to move some of this stuff out. So this is going to be get sequential sector number. which is going to be all of this down to here. Get sequential sector number. Okay, this is going to fail because don't have E off yet. So if the disk block value is zero, then exit with the error code in A. So here, if carry is set, we exit with error. Uh, actually, actually, this can only ever return, this can only ever fail like that. So, um, Okay, so this should still work. Yep. We are reading sequentially. So we are now going to copy all of this Yeah. So if the current record is equal to the record count, the extent is full, and so we need to go and find another one. So we get the allocation block. 
we get the sector if carry is set we're going to have to allocate a block a new one So, um, actually, we're not going to do it there. Hmm. We did this comparison here because it's much easier to test to see if X and A are equal by writing them to memory. I think it's the only way. But really, we want to do it here. So to do that, we're going to do change this way around. So there's two code paths, one for big disks and one for small disks. But this side of things is harder. So we actually want to or the two values together now we can't do that there because you've pushed something onto the stack uh, I think we're going to have to do this the hard way. So So we all the two together if the value is 0 we exit. Uh we have not set x at this point. Uh, however, this code will do it. We could safely reload the byte from y because we know they're both 0. So now we want to load them both again. So T A to X decrement Y and in fact that's better code. get rid of this code so read sequential this is going to be we put that comparison there let's make sure that still works it looks like it works yeah good so in write sequential it essentially becomes this code so we are going to need to allocate a block number where is our block management code bitmap? That'll be here somewhere. The 
uh, given a block number in 10 plus 0 and a block status in A sets it allocation. Okay, so allocate a new block from the bitmap. Uh, allocate block. It's going to be a procedure, I'm sure. So we want to work through the bitmap until we find a byte with a empty uh, block in it. And then we know that uh, okay, it's one bit per block, therefore even if it's a big disk. And we know that the block bitmap must be less than 250 do we know it's less than 256 no big disks can have more than 256 blocks so this is actually going to want to be a actual pointer arithmetic great So we're essentially going to want to load a byte uh, compare it with FF If it's not FF, then this means that, that byte must have empty blocks in it. Otherwise, we're going to want to increment the pointer uh, if rollover in ten plus one. We're also going to want to compare against the end of the bitmap. So we can either ca compute the end of the uh, the bitmap and then compare our pointer, or we can use a counter. Uh, So let's just use a counter that's the wrong field so the DPA here we go we want to know we want to know the size of the allocation bitmap that's not actually there that's in that's in the DPB well, if we haven't actually I haven't created a macro uh, a definition for this if I haven't created a definition for this then DP
Ah, I'm copying it. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, here we go. So, uh... So, wait. Does the DPB contain the address of the, uh, the, the contain the length of the allocation bitmap? I am not sure it does. So the DPH contains directory uh, allocation vector address of the allocation vector, no, that's the so DPB, it does not contain the address of the allocation vector. So in fact, we are going to need to, sorry, it does not contain the length of the allocation vector. So we are going to need to CDR max is wrong. We are going to want to uh, load the we're going to need to compute how long it is from the uh, blocks on disk value. Um, okay, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do something else because reasons. It's going to be slower, but honestly, that's not important. So we copy the... We take a copy of the number of blocks on disk, and this is going to be our count. Nope, I'm changing my mind again. Our count is going to work up from zero. Okay. If if the block number is zero. This is really, really annoying. Uh, rather than do this the cheap and easy way, I'm going to do this the slow and small way. So this is block number. We then Then, given the block number attempt zero, return rotated block status in A. So we are going to get bitmap status. Now, unfortunately, this is going to overwrite temp zero. Why did we do it like that? get bitmap location, reads from temp0 and updates the pointer. Get bitmap... B 
because this code is using temp2 and temp3 for something else. Okay. So, plus 2, SEA 10 plus 0, temp plus 3, SEA 10 plus 1. Okay, so we get the bitmap status into A. Uh, now we want to increment the block number. If it rolls over, increment the high byte. So then we can have a until zero. That means the block is free. Which means we can load the block number into AX and return it. Okay. Um, we don't have, it's more important to be small than fast for all this stuff because even though it's a nasty O1, uh, ON algorithm for finding the new block. Even on a really slow 8-bit machine, the, the amount of time taken to find a block is insignificant compared to the amount of time taken to actually write it to disk. So, this is going to be find unused, find unused block. into XA. We now want to allocate it. This is going to, going to change my mind about this again. So, given a block number in temp 0 and a single bit status in A, so we are going to maybe A temp plus 2, SEA temp plus 0. Block is now allocated. Update. And read the block number and return it. Okay, so our write code, which is here. We've allocated the block. We now want to uh, Set it in the FCB and set the current block number in the FCB to XA. Set FCB block. Um, So again, this is going to be using temporaries, get FCB block index, get index and Y, 
are we a big disk? So should be STX. So we are going to load the low byte store load the high byte store. Otherwise There is only the low byte. And we can simplify. Like this. Okay, so I think this may actually do something. So make baz, hang on, before we do that, bitmap, FFOO, make baz, bitmap. It did not allocate a bit. I was expecting that to be eight zero. Great. So let's get out the debugger and find out why. Wait, what? We are calling right sequential. That's very strange. Why is that not going into right sequential? There are no places where we can actually produce an error so we're going to have to put our breakpoint here foo okay now at least it breaks 2217 okay so uh, that did something weird let's try that one again shall we make food kind of make bar okay that's better so we should have gone from uh, we're now in XFCB Wait a minute, wait a minute No, that's right, that's right. Um, I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to put uh, Put our breakpoint here just to keep me sane. So I don't have to step through the XFCB stuff. Okay. Break. Debugger. Okay. Uh, 
2297. So we now go through the BDOS here. Right, we should now be in right sequential here. So we convert the user FCB. We load the current record, which is zero. We load the record. Ooh, that's not right. Ah, I know what's happening. We are. Uh, we're treating this as end of file where we shouldn't be. Um, okay, that makes much more sense. So we don't want to test against record count, but we do want to check for a uh, extent full error. Then we want to allocate a new extent. We haven't done that yet. Okay, so this is then gets the block. Um, Move the FCB onto the next record for next time. Uh, if CR is greater than record count, update RC. Uh, record count is uh, current record is in A, so uh, compare with param y. So uh, A is the current record. If current record is greater than or equal to record count, carry set. also want to we are going to want to mark the FCB as being modified and we do that by clearing that top bit of the S to flag uh, which is this stuff here So we want to do that here, FCB is modified, and we want to do it here. Now notice that if we're writing to an existing block, we don't necessarily modify the FCB, so we don't have to clear the flag. Okay, so right, make floor. Okay, bitmap four zero four zero. Really, st 
still 4-0. That's the wrong bid. So this looks like it's... Uh, This looks like it has actually calculated, it's, it's found the right bit and then has set the wrong one. I know this because the next time through, yeah, because we've incremented it here. Uh, so we actually want to do this here, break if zero, then do the increment. So then this has to become a loop end loop. We were incrementing the bit block number after we did the test. Okay. Um, yeah, and you notice that the bitmap has been reset. This is because we haven't written our FCB back. Eight zero, good. Make block C zero. Right, it is allocating blocks correctly. Good. So we are now correctly, I think we are now correctly writing to. Uh, the file So that will let's put uh, it needs to go back to code. Okay. So make Fnord bitmap. Okay, so this should have written one record's worth of stuff. We haven't updated the directory but we should have actually written the data. So if I close this and we look at the image file and go down to the end, we see in the right place a record's worth of cues. That's this data here. So there is one more thing we want to do one quite big thing we want to do, which is we go back to our application and we close the file. Now in CPM's close call is uh, badly named because it doesn't actually close the file. You can still write to the file after it's been closed. That's not a problem because it doesn't change anything in the FCB other than to mark it as uh, that it hasn't, it doesn't need flushing again. Uh, what it does do is it syncs the FCB to disk. So this is the point where any of your um, new allocated blocks get written to the directory so that the next time the bitmap is read it'll see them. This is actually pretty cunning. It means that the file system ends up being consistent in the extent of crashes. If your program terminates without closing the file, or rather without flushing the file, syncing it to disk, then any blocks that have been allocated into that extent will be uh, lost. Uh, the data will have been written to disk, but the directory entry won't have been updated to point at them. This does the whole ordered write thing in a 
tiny amount of logic. Uh, it means that the data gets flushed to disk before the metadata gets flushed to disk so that your metadata should always be correct. Uh, the one place where this breaks down is if you change extents, like if you seek between 16k boundaries, we need to flush the current directory to disk so that we can load the, the directory entry for the new extent. Uh, so basically if you're writing to a big file you get periodic flushes as you seek around in the disk and the final changes only get flushed when you call close. It's a fairly elegant system. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to want to add an XFCB function. Uh, no, that's going to... This will go here. Okay. This will be close. So we want prepare, we want BDOS close file. Okay. So now when we run our program, make foo unimplemented. We haven't done close yet. Uh, so we find the n vector table close file close file Open file, create file, close a file, flush the FCB to disk. Okay. So, how does this work? Well, as usual, we want to convert the user FCB. And as usual, we want to go look at the original uh, implementation. Now we have no idea where the um, where the directory entry on disk actually is. So we're going to have to search it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, as usual. Check that the disk is writable, and it will fail with an error, a hard error. If it's not, check that this FCB has actually changed. It's an S2. If the value we just read is negative, then the top bit is set. And we can just return. We now want to find the directory entry. So to do this, we are going to entry for this extent. We want to do a directory scan, and we're looking for all the bytes. 
because we need something that matches uh, ex and s2, but not record count. So s2 plus 1, find first. If there's an error, then we do actually want to fail here. What does it do? So if, uh, if it can't find it, then this means that, yeah, it's just an error. If the directory entry can't be found, this means the user changed disks where they shouldn't. There is a mechanism for testing if disks get changed by checksumming the directory, which we haven't implemented. Okay, but at this point, uh, directory entry has been updated to point at the dear end. We want to update the disk map. So now, I would have thought that you would just copy the FCB. But why is this doing such complicated code? Weird. Update the directory entry from the from the FCB. So we want to update the uh, the record count for a start. So load SDA uh, that's the only thing that needs copying. We now want to <coughs> run through the merge algorithm. <coughs> Excuse me. I suppose the reason for doing this is that it's possible to have the same file open more than once. That seems like a bad idea, to be honest. Okay, that's... Yeah, I don't quite understand that, but this is a big chunk of complicated code, so... I assume it's necessary. Also, I am not sure that find first uh, okay, yeah, it does set carry if no files were found. Does it? Let me just double check that because that might explain why opening invalid files produces weird results. Uh, no more files does indeed set carry. Okay. So I'm going to actually merge FCB into dear end. Uh, if there's an error, exit. In fact, this is going to be fairly fairly small amount of code. So can just be branch if carry set to exit, branch of carry set exit, uh, 
Um, And exit. Now we <coughs> we do want to mark the mark the FCB as modified. not modified So we need to do merge FCB into DRINT and we're going to put that down in the rest of our stupid internal logic. Update bitmap for DRINT, bitmap status, blah blah blah. Where's our where's the code that actually looks at Uh, the allocation block. I can't remember, but we were using it in write sequential. We have set FCB block. Up here in read sequential. Well, that doesn't make any sense, but uh, we want this code to be reasonably... We want this code to be located near each other. Okay. Uh, Current block number uh, actually, this is so Are we a big disk? Yes. That means that uh, our blocks are two bytes, so we are going to FCB block number compare it with the DRENT block number um, 
if they are hmm Actually, I'm going to do the algorithm for the small disk first because that's going to be easier. So, and that will let me decide how it's actually supposed to work. So, uh, if the FCB block number is zero, then we don't have anything to do. No, actually, we do. We want to we want to update the FCB from the DRN in this case. If the If the DRENT block is zero, update it from the FCB. Otherwise, compare them. If they are not equal, then this means that we have two files open. They've both tried to allocate different blocks for, sorry, we have the file open twice and uh, there is a conflict, at which point we just give up. So merge error. We just fail. Go on to the next one and keep going until we hit the end of the allocation map. OK. So that's our algorithm. So now we have to do this for 16 bit values. We are going to have to increment y again so that I should actually put some new lines in to split things up a bit so that uh, we're consistent in the position of y between the two branches of that if. Okay, so now current dirent comma y. Uh, Hang on. 
one second. F FCB is yeah okay. I have I flipped both sides of the both the arrow and the order. So FCB goes to dear end. Y is low. So. So now y is pointing at the low byte. We want to compare the two. Uh, I'm going to do param first. Increment the param y. SB. Current dear end, comma y, and then it's the same error code. So in fact, we can like so. And then increment y so it points at the next item. And yeah, compare, check for the end. and terminate with success. Okay. Not very convi uh, I mean, the algorithm is, is simple enough, but I'm not particularly convinced by my implementation of it. So, make Baz. So we hang. 1, D, 2, C, D, E, F. We're here. So, are we a big disk? No. We're doing this version. Get the FCB block number. So, this will be the one that we've just allocated. Nope, that's not a correct block number. So our FCB is at 242F, and there is indeed a block number there, but we have set the wrong value there. So break at 1D2C. Okay. Get the block number 9. So somehow we managed to write back that. Uh, That block eight is in use. Interesting. I wonder how that happened. Anyway, um, is it zero? No. Get the dear end block. Is it zero? Yes. Therefore, copy into the dear end. Are they different? No, they're not, which is a good thing because we've just copied one to the other. Go round to the next one. Get the FCB block number. Is it zero? Yes, it is. 
So we copy from the dear end, but that's going to be zero as well, but this is harmless because they're the same. Copy in the other direction. This is also going to go through and go around again. So let's just finish that. Uh, hex edit. So that we can see that blue here does indeed have a block allocated to it. So does Baz. I don't know why. So we see that there are in fact two blocks on disk, both of which are identical, but that's okay. So I can dump that and we get 128 bytes of, of queues. Use shorter file names. Okay, I think this is working. The file system image will be extended by the MOS operating system as needed. Um, I just need to make sure it's sized, the file is sized correctly. Uh, I just need to make sure that the disk definition is correct to make it actually fit on a floppy disk. Cool, I think this is working. So we don't have any of the extent management stuff yet. So that when we reach the end of an extent, we want to move to the next one. We can't have files bigger than 16K. But I believe it is working. Let's I'm using make DFS to create a disk image. Uh, okay, boot that from a real disk. Ah. You see the pause as we get to here. That's because it's reading the next directory sector. So I can make a file. Oh, interesting. Right, I know what happened there. So what's happened is it's is uh, it's tried to make the CPMFS file bigger. So we've been dumped back to MOS, but it can't. Does X EX work? Yeah. So uh, this is a MOS command that shows the names of the files, load address, execution address, length, and start sector. DFS, which is what this is all based on, doesn't support fragmented files. So it can't make CPMFS any bigger because the BDOS file is in the way. So if I kill this off and change the order in which I add the files, like so, then I run it. We see that uh, BDOS is below CPMFS, CPMFS and the sector number. So I run that. We should be able to extend the file. And indeed we can. And there is our queue. Excellent. Right, we can read and write files. Small files. So that is really nice progress. Uh, where's my 
vector table. We need to implement uh, the one the calls here that are, that we actually want to implement. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So yeah, it's still quite a lot of calls, but most of the actual logic, the hard stuff, is done. Uh, the, the next bit is going to be extent management. Uh, so here, and in fact, all this is going to want to do is to close the current extent to make sure it's been flushed increment the extent pointer and uh, open the file again. So this is not going to be a lot of code and it's going to be the same code for both read and write. Then of course we have to fix all the bugs. Okay, so I am going to stop here for now because let's just because I want to go and have lunch and my scan has finished. So that is, that's very pleasing. Okay, next time, extents.